All summer long, you can enjoy special screenings with in-person guests here at TIFF Bell Lightbox. And um, there is a filmmaker who we just announced uh, who will have a new film at the festival making its world premiere. Her name is Casey Lemons. Her film is called Harriet. It is about the legendary hero, Harriet Tubman. And, uh, but before that happens, uh, we have Casey Lemons' classic film in, in a special director's cut. That film is called Eve's Bayou. It premiered here in Toronto many, many years ago. If you haven't seen it, you must see it. And this is a film that traces a family secret over the course of a summer in 1960s Louisiana. That event is happening Wednesday, August 24th. Make a note of that in whatever device you brought. I think that's a place you're going to want to be here for that screening. You, you can find out more. And you can also get tickets at tiff.net. Now, on to tonight's event. We're thrilled to present a sneak preview of this powerful, timely film about family separation across borders, about migration, and about pride in your identity. Uh, so we're going to take you into that world, the world of Jamaica, the world of track and field. But this is more than just a simple sto sports story about a track sensation. It's about a man running for his family and future, and it's a celebration of Jamaican culture. Beautiful cinematography, saturated, colorful, incredible dance hall soundtrack, and story and dialogue that really give this picture a pulsating energy. Its executive producers are people you might know, Jada Pinkett Smith and Will Smith. And they said, you can clap. <laughs> they said, we're beyond excited to share the film with audiences everywhere. Sprinter is a testament to the powerful, personal, and universal stories that can be told when underrepresented voices are given access, inclusion, and opportunity. We are so proud of this film. Um, thank you for having me, Tiff. Um, thank you, Cameron, and everyone here for um, making this happen. Um, it's great to show here. Um, and also, it's great to show in Toronto, because I love this city. But beyond that, I know it's holy power people them there, right? <laughs> I know we're a big part of the fabric of this community as well. So it's great to kind of be here with the work and to have you guys see it. Um, Sprinter, I feel like, is it represents or is happening in a moment where there's a large movement of um, independent cinema across the Caribbean. I'm one of the filmmakers that's a part of that. There's more films that are coming. Um, so please enjoy, and we're going to be here for Q&A after. So any questions you have, um, you know, ask me. All right. Love, enjoy. Um. I think a lot of people, especially here, will know the history and the culture and the training that goes into Jamaican sprinting, but there aren't that many movies. This was the first movie I'd ever seen yeah. about uh, sprinting in Jamaica. Can you talk a little bit about that world you were trying to capture in the film and this particular story? Um, well, I definitely saw that Jamaica's dominance in sprinting, like, the in, like you know, with Bolt and Shelly Ann Fraser, um, and Veronica Campbell Brown and all these athletes, like we really had, you know, the, like we still have the world's attention when it comes to sprinting. So, and I'm always interested in in speed. I was a fast runner as well. What um, was your race? Hundred meter. Uh -huh. What was, was your, your best time? Uh, me no member, but me, <laughs> me used to win enough. <laughs> um, but. I was interested in that, but then of course, you know, track and field is really a vehicle mm. to show this this Caribbean family, this very much Caribbean family now. Um, and I just wanted to, you know, Jamaicans have made our mark in the world and and because we have so much impact, there's also like, we also have stories about who we are. So there's certain kind of archetypes and sometimes stereotypes about who people think Jamaican people are. And I just wanted to show a story that wasn't, relying on those things wasn't a rags to riches get a story was just more a little bit middle of the road and uh, i think those little more subtle moments are what's most interesting about it you know a lot of the emotion for me anyhow uh comes from just the separation that's built into this family with his mother being away for so long and him growing up without her and that that longing that I think they, they both feel, and that's something that probably every immigrant family in this city yeah. feels. I know a lot of people in Jamaica have yeah. family here in Toronto, London, New York, yeah. wherever. Um, can you talk about, about that aspect of the story? That's very particular to yeah. the Jamaican experience as well. Well, all I know is when I was growing up, 
so many of my friends, you know, had one parent or two parents away and just to, you know, like this, as I say, they call it barrel picnic, you know what I mean? Because of barrel, you're sending back barrels with goods, food, etc. And that's just a normal, it's so normal. It is so normal, guys, to the point where our lead actor, Dale Elliott, I didn't know his family story when we called him into audition. When I talk, spoke to him about the character, he's like, yo, somebody tell you about my life or something. And here it is. Here's a story. He's playing a character who's trying to get back to his mom, right? In real life, Dale's mom left and went to the UK when he was five. His father left soon after and went to Florida, right? He was raised by his grandparents. He went to Kingston College. He ran for Kingston College. Um, and he only had a relationship with both of them through you know, Skype, phone calls, similar to the character. And when we shot Sprinter in Jamaica, then we went to LA to finish shooting, mm -hmm. he stopped in Florida and reconnected with his dad for the first time in well over a decade in person, right? And now they've kind of built and built a relationship and he, he's like even has um, resident status in the US now, his father filed for him. So they've kind of re rebuilt that. And then earlier this year, we went to London we screened at the BFI, and his mother was waiting for him at the airport. And that was the first time he saw her in person in 17 years. You understand? So wow. here's a kid playing a character, trying to get back to his family. And then the film itself, the movement of the film, is actually helping to reconnect his family, which is this whole you know, transcendent thing. That's an incredible story. Yeah, man. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the lead actor uh, in terms of how you found him and just what the, the acting community in Jamaica is like for, for feature films? Yeah, well, you know, um, the consistent thing for actors in Jamaica is the theatre. So, you know, that's always happening. So even if you have people that are talented on screen, they want to really be acting all the time. It, it, it's theatre. So I see actors just sometimes in things and I kind of register them like, okay, I want to work with you. Like Kadeem Wilson who plays the older brother. I always wanted to work with him. He's such a phenomenal mm -hmm. actor. And uh, there was a time I even thought he could be the, the, the sprinter. Uh, okay. But we realized pretty quickly he was not a sprinter. <laughs> right? And besides he was getting a little older, the thing is if you're going to run track, you have to look like a runner. Mm -hmm. You have to have form. Mm -hmm. Any runners in the house will know that. Form is everything, right? Mm -hmm. So... We had, I had chosen a few people I knew I wanted to work with, but finding that youth who could play a high schooler, who was a runner, mm -hmm. and could also play this guy's brother, all this stuff. So how I actually found him is, um, his name is Dale Elliott Jr. He's known as Ellie the Viner. Mm -hmm. And he's a known, uh, see? Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's, a, he's kind of an Instagram star in Jamaica, oh, okay. right? Uh -huh. um, he has a following. So, and I was actually, because I'm a visual artist as well, I was exhibiting some work in Norway, randomly. Some Jamaicans living there mm -hmm. were watching Instagram and laughing at this guy. I said, yo, Storm, you don't know this, this brother. Mm. And when I looked, I was like, oh, this guy is interesting. And he's, he was funny. He had a certain look. He had a certain picture that looked like he was a runner. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of tracked him down. And then I heard a story about his life. And this is his first movie, first mm. film. So Amazing. It, that's, a, yeah. that's a big job to carry a feature <laughs> film in your very first acting. And you're in every scene, practically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was a risk. Uh, you know, I know what it's like working with non-actors, and it is a challenge, and it was a challenge, but I just felt this youth's life was so much like the character, mm. and he had it in him that I took that risk, and, you know, this is the result, you know. We're going to open it up to you in a little bit, so I want you to prepare your questions for Storm. I've just got, just got a couple more things I wanted to ask you about. Um, there's a style to your work, and people who've seen Better Must Come and Sprinter will, will see the kind of the vitality, the camera movement, the color, the use of music in your work, and I know you do music videos uh, as well. Can you talk a little bit about your particular visual style, your style as a filmmaker, and what, if any, part of that comes from Jamaica? Um, I guess for me, I am I'm kind of like, there's certain filmmakers that have inspired me. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Stanley Kubrick is one, Wong Kar Wai is one, and Wong Kar Wai works with the cinematographer, Chris Doyle. Chris Doyle. Mm -hmm. And I'm into cinematography. Mm -hmm. And I remember seeing some of that work when I was pretty young. And it really inspired me. Mm -hmm. And I just, and uh, Alfonso Cuaron, Itumama Tambien was a big one for me. And it's an inspiration for this film. So I basically saw how some filmmakers were, were, were you know, 
filming their worlds mm. and capturing the textures of their worlds. And I just felt like we, I, I wanted to capture Jamaica in that way, like the little intricacies and the little random ways of saying things. Um, I not only wanted to capture them, I wanted to like really grab them and really give them context within their atmosphere. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, it's like a stylized realism. Mm. You know what I mean? I'm into photography, I'm into cinematography. I know how I want the camera to look, but I also want to capture the nuances, you know? So I kind of, it's a little organized kind of chaos, you know? I kind of try to get actors in a certain way and then let the camera just, just move. Mm -hmm. um, I like that. I like to tell a story visually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what about music and sound in, in your films? Um, yeah, well, I love dub music a lot. Mm -hmm. There's something about dub, how they kind of rearrange what's created. I love it. It's like a remix type of energy. So I do think of my work and in kind of like a dub way, like mm. atmosphere. Mm. And with this film, actually, I, w I move more into using soundtrack. There's a lot more songs in this. Mm. With Better Must Come, it was much more score. Yeah. But um, I kind of love score, but I feel like for this, like this is a, a young Rasta youth. Mm -hmm. Right now, Chronix and Protégé and Janine, Leela IK. there's a whole movement of like mm. young roots artists that I felt this is his... This is who he's listening to, the character's listening to. But then he's in his brother's world, which is this dance hall, scammer dance hall <laughs> world, which is its own subgenre. So I just try to make the music kind of like um, echo that on either sides, you know? Um, and I feel like, you know, I, f I resisted this early bef in my like work, but people want to hear good music from Jamaica. They expect it. I think the harder they come kind of created this thing where it's like, you better, your soundtrack better wicked. So I kind of had that in my mind mm. and I just wanted to like make sure the music chosen really echoed what was happening, really worked and, and I was you know, particular about that. Mm. There are not enough films coming out, feature films coming out of Jamaica. Yeah. Uh, you know, to my mind, anyhow, I'd love to see more. And, and yeah. you really have been at the forefront of that for the last several years. What is it like to try to build an audience for mm -hmm. Jamaican film, both in Jamaica, and mm -hmm. you can tell us how much um, you know your film is being seen, has been yeah. seen by Jamaicans, but also outside of Jamaica, places like Toronto, like the UK, like mm -hmm. uh, you know the US and other places. Mm -hmm. What's the audience for Jamaican film, and, and how can it grow? Well, you know, I find I found when you come to distribution, you think that the people who distribute film really know what's going on, right? And <laughs> Uh -huh. I think they do to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, I think a film like this comes along and it's kind of hard to categorize. Mm -hmm. Is it a sports film? Is it a big sports drama? Is it a indie, you know, festival film? What kind of film is it? And I feel like we have audiences for this film everywhere, mm -hmm. you know, but it's just like we have to kind of prove it. Yeah. So it's been tricky, but, but people show up like, look, this is a full house, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Um, it's the second full house we've had and, and as we've shown in Toronto. Um, and I feel like with Sprinter, we have to kind of try to chart a new path and like prove the numbers, prove the viability of the work, prove that there's like hundreds and thousands and maybe millions of people that want to see this, mm -hmm. but it's not clear cut. There isn't a set path. Is this a, you know, is this an African-American film? Mm -hmm. Is this a, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We kind of have to chart our own thing because the algorithm isn't there that says it. But we go London, the place Sheldon, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> New York, Sheldon, Florida, Toronto, you know? So this, there's an audience for this. Mm -hmm. And a big part of Sprinter and what we've wanted to do is to prove it, you know? Also wanna um, big up the big bad producer, Rob Mailer, who's here. Mm -hmm. He's a very hard working <laughs> brethren. He, he's at the front lines of what I'm talking about and, and trying to, you know, show the market and sh and get there you know what i mean so so yeah i and i also feel like what whoever wants to see this film is going to want to see the next great caribbean film from trinidad or from wherever so it's really a caribbean wide mm -hmm. energy so i'm jamaican and i'm saying it from a jamaican point of view but i know people are out there that want to see stuff from across the region so i'm we're trying to like feed that and um i'm working on new projects we're trying to turn over work a lot quicker and feed that market you know so anything you, you can tell us about what's coming next for you yeah man um <laughs> i'm right now i'm adapting um john crow's devil by marlon james um yeah so that's his first novel it's a great story i mean all his work is really great but it's a great story i've wanted to do it for a long time so i'm i'm just finished or i'm about to finish the second draft of the script and 
pushing that. And also, we are developing episodic TV, and we are looking at potentially developing, not potentially, we're developing a series on Sprinter. Sprinter as a TV series. Sprinter TV series. Love yeah. it. Love it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Let's go out to you now. If you've got a question, please just raise your hand. We've got microphones on either side of the room. I might just wait for the mic to come to you first. There's a lady down here in the front row. Orange shoes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I just want to say that this is my second time seeing the film. Oh, and nice. as a first generation Jamaican Canadian, thank you for making um, this artwork that um, is so relevant and is relatable across Caribbean people all across the world, like, I, like that, as you were saying. So thank you for that. And so my question to you is, after you've written a script, like what is the process that you go about in terms of seeking funding or like getting producers to be on board? Um, well, how it kind of worked with this, I workshopped this, this film for a while. I was actually in the TIFF Talent Lab after my first film, and that was a great experience. I actually was saying to Christoph, that's where I, I met Ava DuVernay, who ended right. up distributing yeah. Better Must Come in, in North America. Um, and I think this idea was percolating even then. But it took me a few years to get this to a point. And then Rob got involved towards, you know, when we were kind of advancing, and we finished the script together. And um, the funny thing is, once the script was finished, within about three months, we were in pre-production. We were able to, Richard Jefferson um, got on board, he's an NBA veteran um, who loved the story, he got on board, and then Rob was able to get the script to Overbrook, to Will Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith's company. They loved it, they got on board. So the thing is, it took a while to get the story right, but once we got the story right, and I was able to get Usain Bolt connected and a few other things, it really happened quite quickly. I think to get money, you have to know your story. You have to be passionate about it. When you step into that room to talk to people, they have to see that this person's going to fight to make this thing amazing. And they have to feel that, I think, because when people get involved, they're relying on you to push it through. And I, I think I had that passion. I showed it. And, um, and that helped a lot. And the story was, was solid. Mm -hmm. you know? Just so people have an idea, how many times do you think you had to pitch Sprinter before you started shooting? Oh man, I did I did labs, I did pitching contests. Mm -hmm. Um, I learned how to like tell the story real quick. I learned my slogans, I learned my taglines, I learned my themes. How many times? Who knows, man? It doesn't happen 20, overnight. 20, 30, it does not happen mm -hmm. overnight. Mm -hmm. Um at all. But you know, I, I think when you're creating, for me, ideas bubble for a while. So I, I kind of know the world and I might know the major conflicts, but the textures of it and what's really the most important elements playing, they take a while to really reveal themselves and it does change in your mind for a while. And sometimes pitching helps with that process because you pitch and then there's some little element that someone's like, that's, that's what's really got me interested. I'm like, oh, well, I didn't really think about that. Let me make that more, you know, so... Pitching is important, rejection is important. We were speaking, I was speaking with a group um, earlier today. It's like, you know, that's just a redirection for you, you know, to kind of refine what you're trying to do. Yeah. Okay. All right, who else has got a question? Someone up here? Oh, down here, sorry, you've got a microphone in your hand already, go ahead. All right, I'm from the Bahamas and I saw that this premiered at the Bahamas International Film Festival, mm -hmm. which is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a writer also, and I was curious, you mentioned earlier, like the script process. Mm -hmm. How does that come about in terms of making sure the story stays authentic? Because it is an adaptation of a life. Mm -hmm. So when you're writing the script, how do you stay focused and make sure that you hit those beats and like write a yeah. great script? This is a great film. Yeah, respect. Um, Man, that is a, the painful, a very painful process, man. Writing is rough for me. I know there's some people that just love to sit and, and write, but me, I don't want them, <laughs> right? It's rough. And you find everything to, to like, you know, all you need is your phone to light up and say, oh, let me just, you know, divert. <laughs> it's a rough process. It's hard. So if you're writing and you're like, why is this so hard? Just know it's hard for all of us who are writing. You know what I mean? However, that's the basis upon which the thing is built. So you have to find ways to stay focused. You have to find ways to push through. Um, you have to make time. 
for me, it's been difficult because I am also directing commercials. I'm directing other projects. I'm making a living in between my films. So I'm always trying to find moments to do it. And it's been tough. But um, I think when you don't have a ton of time and when it's difficult, it helps you to decide what story you really believe in. Because if it's something you're not really believing in, it's gonna, the pain isn't going to be worth it. You know, so if the pain, you have to make, you have to do something that the pain is worth it, you know, to stay with it. Thank you. We'll go up here. Hi, good evening. Um, I'm Angela Bennett, representing the Jamaica Tourist Board here in Canada. And I'm truly happy to be here this evening. Um, I think it was a great film, and I look forward to watching it again and again. Yeah, um, the story is real. It's very real. There are some parts that that really makes you reflect on things that happen at home and we wish they wouldn't happen. But I love the fact that he triumphed. And this is a strong message, especially right now in Jamaica. And this is very powerful for our, our youth. And as you say, the, the people that he's looking up to, the chronics, coffee, they're really transcending and more positive vibes out of Jamaica. And I'm so proud that this film is coming out at this time. I have one question. If you don't know Patwa, mm -hmm. you miss the punchlines of this film. <laughs> so my question to you was, I wonder how you felt uh, risking this, because I think this could be for a very wide audience but they have to learn a little bit of patois. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, you know, the, the skating the, the line of language is tricky because it's like the side of me that just wants the language to be absolutely genuine and as close to it as possible. And then there's a side of like walking that tight rope of do we need subtitles or not? There was a moment where we didn't think we need we needed subtitles or we thought a version of this could happen without subtitles. But you know, you test it in front of different audiences and some people just miss entire. So you say you might miss a little su subtlety with the pato, but if you, if you have no pato and then you don't have the subtitles, you might miss a whole section, a whole chunk. So it's a, it's a choice we had to make and there's theories that it decreases, you know, like, oh, I haven't have subtitles, it's a challenge, distribute, whatever. But you know, at the same time, you know, I watch films like City of God and films from other places in languages I don't know. And they're strong stories and they impact me. So I just want the story to, you know, be able to live. But there's a funny thing. We would shoot takes and whenever I was ready to move on, our American producers would be like, um, so can we get a take where he kind of tones down the part a little bit? <laughs> right? So I just started calling it the Yankee take. <laughs> right? So once I got the take I liked, I just said, all right, Yankee take now. <laughs> you know? Yeah. All right, we have a question up here and then a, a number down here. So we'll go up here first. Go ahead. The cinematography definitely, um, watching this film definitely impressed me because, of course, you've managed to show the country so beautifully, both in a very intricate sort of urban situation as well as uh, the natural scenes across the country. Could you speak to, I guess, specifically what sort of camera work, single, dual, drone, I presume there was some drone work in there, but if you could speak to the cameras used and how you use them. I would have to big up my DP, Pedro Milan. He's an amazing DP, he's from Mexico. Um, we shot this big him up, yeah, man. Um, and uh, we shot this in the middle of summer in Jamaica, in uh, the heat in you know, some concrete slab house. And um, we, I was looking at DPs and there were some DPs I knew that like, they were like, they were order, ordering all this like fancy gear, I'm gonna need this and I'm like, no man, no, no. you're not gonna make it through. And Pedro was able to make it through. Um, and uh, we shot on Alexa. Um, I think in Jamaica we shot on Alexa Classic. And then when we went to LA, we shot on Alexa Minis. Um, we had Drone, Inspire, we had, you know, thing is in Jamaica we're shooting these running scenes and action scenes and when you have track you can't really put a vehicle on the track they're very iffy about what you can do so we had to rig cameras to like some old pickup truck and you know what I mean we had to like kind of find ways to get the action out of it um, and then when we went to LA there was all kind of things that we, you know all kind of devices we could attach and have more fun 
Um, so that's how we did that. And also it was mostly handheld, handheld sometimes, steady cam, a lot of times doubling up shooting two cameras, using a lot of practical lighting, using a lot of natural light, um, and moving really fast. We shot very fast on this film. Yeah. How many days was the shoot? Jamaica was um 21 or 22. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's in, fast. Yeah, and LA was like six days. Okay. Wow. Yeah, wow. yeah. Okay. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. Go down here. Sorry, thank you very much for making that film because I've been Sorry. lamenting the lack of any quality, academically competent uh, art coming out of Jamaica in terms of music and film. I'm really tired of all the bad man ghetto business. That's all we seem to get nowadays. So I have to thank you very, very much for doing that. And also for the patwa. I, when I go around the world, I look for Patwa book. Uh, any Patwa book I find, I read it, including the Patwa Bible. How many, the question I'd like to ask then is, how many other storytellers and filmmakers like you are there in Jamaica and the Caribbean? There's a lot. There's many filmmakers. Um, right now in Jamaica, uh, you know, normally over the years, there's been like different kind of groups of people that make work, and we haven't all been coming together. And... Uh, in recent years, we've formed the JAFTA, which is Jamaica Film and Television Association. I'd say most, if not all, of the serious filmmakers, directors, writers, actors ha are a part of this organization. Um, so now we're kind of able to address things. We're able to lobby the government. We have like, we know, kind of streamline opportunities for writers. There's a project called the Propeller Project that they um, judge and fund like five short films per year so you're now finding new filmmaking talent every year so right now there there's like an energy to, to to find people there's a lot of talent in jamaica i know great filmmakers from the bahamas trinidad aruba obviously cuba which has a very long strong film in history um and we're all kind of rising you know i have kind of like peers that are to me like we're all kind of bubbling on a similar level from different places um so I feel like there's an emergent Caribbean cinema movement. This is one of the films that's a part of it. There are others. And uh, I, I, I just kind of, this is the same thing of finding the markets and finding distribution and being able to prove how many people want to see it because that creates an easier, like a way to translate to investors and distributors that this is really worth it. You know, I mean, we're still kind of cracking down the old Hollywood-centric kind of styles or, you know, kind of modes of what's what's acceptable or not even acceptable, what's valuable, you know? Yeah, there's a, a lot of people who still uh, have their hands up want to ask questions. I wanted to see, is there someone right in the center who's got their hand up right here? I would like this individual to ask a question if possible. That's right, that's you. You had your hand up for a long time, didn't you? Okay, just wait for the microphone, it's on its way to you. And then Storm wants to hear what you have to say. What was your favorite song in the movie? My favorite song? Um, well, there were some original songs that were written for the movie um, by uh, an artist named Kabaka Pyramid, the great artist. Um, and the opening song, Holding On, I really love, where he's running through the fields. Um, yeah, I would say probably maybe that one. Okay. Yeah, man. Thank you for your question. Thank you. All right, um, I want to come down here first and then there, so we'll go here and then to you. Yep, uh, the gentleman, uh, yeah. I know this individual right here. Hi, friend. Um, the last time you were here, you blessed us with Better Must Come. Uh, come back again with Sprinter. Uh, over, the, over the years, you've grown, I've grown, Cameron's grown. Tell us uh, what has been on this journey for you um, what has been kind of like the greatest lesson as a filmmaker? Um, both films I found were great, but what has been the greatest lesson for you on this journey between the two films? For me, um, I feel like there's a growing confidence in like believing in your original vision. You know what I mean? Like I feel like myself and other Caribbean filmmakers and writers are coming way more confident in uh, 
not trying to map our stories to a kind of set pattern of how it should come because we consume a lot of culture especially from america and these places so i find like i've taught classes and i've done workshops and i can i read projects from people and i can see that they're coming in this very hollywood form because that's what you're kind of reading and being exposed to there's also a lot of fantasy because there's a lot of kids and stories that get into like fantasy and anime and these things and uh for me I feel like I'm seeing a, a shift and I felt a shift in confidence towards like my story and the way I see it being really as valuable, if not more valuable in a way than what's, this, than what's kind of out there because it's, it's a, a new vision. So I think there's that. Um, less is more. As I become a better director, I, I shoot less. Uh, I kind of move faster and um, I'm better at keeping a, a hold of what the bigger picture is. You know I me mean, all the time, which I think is what we should be doing to kind of be able to really master the form. Yeah. Thank you. All right, we go. Yes, right here. And then if you're in the back and you want to ask a question, please wave your hand. We're gonna take one or two more. Go ahead, please. Hi. Um, I just want to say the movie was amazing. I loved it. I think this deserved to be on every big screen <laughs> across yeah. Canada and America. Um, but as a Jamaican, um, I saw a lot of um some of the young talents because uh, i follow all these guys on instagram yeah, right yeah. and um I, I love seeing them on the big screen right and uh, i was thinking over the years that we've seen uh characters play jamaicans it's always been um sometimes americans who mm -hmm. imitate the jamaican mm -hmm. or like you said earlier use stereotypes to tell mm -hmm. the story so how uh important was it for you to make sure that uh, the characters uh, or Jamaican talent has been featured throughout the film, yeah. even if it was just like um, small roles, but especially the main character. How important was it for you to make sure that, that mm -hmm. those characters were played by Jamaican actors and actresses? Yeah, it was very important because there's certain ways and nuances and just I want to see those people on the screen. Those are the people I want to see up there, you know what I mean, that have that way of being that has, is more familiar to me and not familiar to the rest of the world necessarily. So it's really key to do that. I would, I, I am thriving to get to the point where, you know, it's a film business. So name talent does play a role. And especially when you're kind of making your way to getting it to the screen, that comes into play. I would love to get to the point where I never had to think about those things and I could just get whoever was absolutely best for the part, whether they're known, unknown, whatever. You know what I mean? Because I see work where I don't know none of the people in there. It's just new faces. And it's great. Also, and this is very funny that happens in Jamaica. You see when a Jamaican watch somebody in a movie, if they see them in real life, them is the person in the movie, you know. <laughs> them will say, see, like someone who do bad, they'll be like, you're wicked. We we come out of a screening and I see people licking the big brother like, you're wicked. You're, you're, why you, you're leaning, right? So it's like, <laughs> Is very real, but the reason is, is, it's like if I watch Denzel, me know a Denzel me I watch, right? But if you're watching someone new, as far as you know, that's who they are. So there's another layer of believability that I think does add something on a subconscious level. And whenever I can add that to the arsenal, I'm interested. And I just want, you know, I think there's great star talent there that are capable of doing great things. So anything I can do to give them the platform, I'm gonna do it. You know. Thank you. All right. Uh, last, uh, yep, up here towards the back, there is someone with a question. And let me hit, come down here. Good night, everyone. Ooh. Good night. Um, my question is um, centered. Around, I don't remember her name. She she was the friend. Uh, Mira. Mira. Yeah. Um, she was herself. such a strong black woman. Yeah. Um, and you talking about Kerry, the girl on the track team? Kerry. Yes, Kerry. Yeah, yeah. Kerry, yeah. not not Mira. Mira have problems. But <laughs> <laughs> Mira did not go on with a bunch of things. But okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was yeah. no, Mira Kerry was such a strong black woman, and mm -hmm. I wanted to know if it was important to you to show that because Jamaican women tend to be that. Um, dominant and strong and kind mm -hmm. of aggressive mm -hmm. and we don't say oh we just forget up and move right yeah so i wanted to know if you did that on purpose to kind of show how we can be strong and supportive without being yeah. like the typical angry black woman 
I also wanted to commend you on showing all the different shades that yeah. live in Jamaica. Yeah, I don't think we do that. And also on the fact that the woman who was leading was a... You know, I'm another... Is that right? Yeah. Um, it was very important to me because I think it's the truth, you know? Um, a lot of this film is... I mean, I, I'm obviously a, a Caribbean man. I'm I'm analyzing all these things in my life, what it means to be a Jamaican man, all this stuff. The, our ideas of masculinity, etc., are kind of very set. And I feel like it can produce positivity and sometimes can push us in a negative way, trying to prove certain things. But the women in Jamaica and beyond have always had to keep it together. Always. You know what I mean? No matter what go on, they have to figure it out. You know what I mean? I'm not saying the men don't, but I just think culturally there is a bit of a freedom of something and women don't have that that same thing they have to get it together i mean jamaica and it shows itself in different ways i mean i believe jamaica probably has the most women in um like who run companies in per capita in the world or something like that and i think that definitely comes from this consistent thing of women having to keep it together even when sometimes the men aren't keeping it together and i've witnessed it um I've had that own experience kind of in my, my own life in equal ways. And I just wanted to show, and it's not really about one or the other. It's just kind of showing people who show up for you when you fall down, a strength of character. Um, sister Pam, you think, oh, is his girlfriend? No, is him, is him sister, is Arasta sister, and that's it, that him falling down and he's giving him certain advice to keep it up. His mom, um, Kerry, a lot of times, and I think that's something that we need to like acknowledge more as as men in the Caribbean and show more respect to the women and kind of really just give them them props and not you know what I mean? Because there's a bit of a battle there. There's a masculinity dominance slash Amer uh, slash like women rising clash that is kind of plays out in subtle ways in the society that I think you know is just like kind of you know it's gonna have to change eventually. So I was just trying to, ha that seeped into the story and uh, I just tried to keep it as real as possible. Thank you, was there a question down here? Okay, uh, microphone is coming down to you. And I think this is gonna have to be the last question. There you go. Hello, hi, how are you doing? Yeah man, bless up. I just wanna say big up for the movie already because it's a big movie. I, f I feel like everybody here will agree, but, um. I know you briefly touched on on the casting process about seeing actors in theater in Jamaica, but I, I want to know if you could maybe touch on the casting process a bit more. Does let do you cast do you do castings outside of Jamaica? Yeah. These things, yeah, man. Um, for my next film, I'm definitely going to be casting outside of Jamaica as well. I'm definitely going to be casting in Toronto, probably London, New York. I'm trying to find. I think you're saying exactly what this gentleman yes, wants I know. to hear. I'm just, I know that, <laughs> you know I'm just that, making right? him know. Okay. Um, I mean, you find different ways to get to it, but I do know that um, we have to throw the net far and wide um, to find actors from everywhere that can play the role, that, that have the experience, have the connection, understand the language, etc. But we have to see all of the talent because Jamaica is a small place. I can tell you, the next film I'm working on is there's some intense things that go on. And sometimes we do run into situations where there's an actor you really want to work with, but there's a there's something they have to do or a place they have to go that they're not willing or able to go to. Um, for whatever reason, sometimes because you know, you're know you going to do it and then you're going to just see everybody that you know the day after, you know what I mean? And, and it's a real thing. Mm -hmm. So I will be casting in a far, further and wider way, but still, you know, if the character's a Jamaican character, someone who can play that role properly. Um, otherwise, in Jamaica... As I say, I would talk to actors I respect that know other people. I call certain casting people, I see people, and it's kind of a mix between fresh people and sending me actors that I know have some chops to see if they work. It is easier to work with actors who have experience. It's just a reality as a director, you know, it is. You know? All right, I think we're gonna have to leave it there tonight. I'll just ask you to please join me in thanking the writer, director, sprinter, Storm Salter. One last thing before we go. For people who weren't here tonight who want to see Sprinter, how can they see it? Yeah, well, um, you can go to SprinterTheFilm.com. We are, have opened in the U.S. We're running theatrically. We've been running using theatrical on demand. So if you're in the U.S., you can go to our website. You can put in your zip code. There's hundreds, if not thousands, of participating cinemas. You can request a screening in your area. 
once enough people um, reserve a ticket, the screening happens. So we've had screenings at this point. I don't know where we're at, but 70, 80 cities in the U.S. we've screened in and continue to. It's open in Jamaica, and we are right now working on releasing in Canada. So we'll be making right. some announcements so about that for it. soon. Right. Yeah, and sprinttothefilm.com, at sprinttothefilm is our social handles. Mine is at Storm Salt. It's just follow, spread the word, spread the love, right. and let's make it happen. Storm, thank you. Thanks for coming up. Right. Respect. Right.